Hey guys, so today I'm here with a review of the Sony Ericsson Xperia Play 4G smartphone. Now this phone, also known as the PlayStation phone, was leaked and rumored well before it came out, and this is going to be the AT&T 4G version that came out about a week or two ago. Uh, so let's go ahead and start you guys out with a quick tour around the phone. Up front you'll find a 4 inch, 8, uh, 480 by 854 pixel display, and the display is really nice. Uh, it's got great viewing angles, I'm not, actually you guys can probably tell pretty well on the camera right there, but it's got great viewing angles, and it's really nice, clear, crisp, vibrant, all that kind of stuff for gaming. Uh, I was actually really impressed. I also like the 4 inch size, I think it's a good size for a smartphone, where it doesn't have to be enormous in your pocket, but of course you still have plenty of uh, real estate for all your games and that kind of thing. Um, up front here you guys will find the front facing VGA camera, um, it's a front facing camera, it's not really anything particularly amazing. And on the bottom here you guys will find that it does have the 4 Android buttons, back, home, menu, and search. Over here on the back you will find the 3.5mm headset jack along with the USB, not a whole lot over here, and if I flip the phone over this way, you guys will be able to see the LNR buttons for gaming. Uh, they're not really that great, I will say. They're not, uh, they're a little, I don't know, they, the, the action and the motion on them is not quite that great. But it's nice to have those buttons, of course, for all kinds of gaming. Um, over here, you will find the volume rocker, which is a, kind of a weird spot when you look at it from this angle, but, you know, when you're doing the volume from this side of the phone, it makes plenty of sense. Um, up front here, you guys will find the sleep wake button. And around on the back here, you will find the 5 megapixel rear facing camera with LED flash. Uh, and of course, that's all fine and good, but the whole point of the PlayStation phone is to have PlayStation controls. Uh, so, as you guys can see here, it has some pretty nice controls. So, uh, if you guys have ever seen a PSP Go, it's kind of similarly laid out. You have, of course, your D pad, your standard uh, PlayStation buttons. Now, these are two virtual joysticks, and I'll get into you know how the gaming performance is and everything in just a little bit. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty nice setup, and of course, you do have your select start and your menu buttons. As far as the software on the phone goes, it runs Android 2.3 Gingerbread with a custom Sony Ericsson layout. Uh, so, for example, you can see here that you can scroll through your tweets, your Facebook mentions, all that kind of stuff that you have connected to the phone. I mean, you can also, of course, also just swipe through, and let's say we want to, oh, I don't know, change the wallpaper, go to pick a new wallpaper here, so, uh, that looks nice, so we can just pick this out, and of course, just like any Android phone, you have all the customization and everything that you would expect. Uh, now, over here, there are some new applications that do come with it, and one of the big ones is the PlayStation, or rather, the Xperia Play games. Uh, so, on this, you can find that there are several games that come with it. So, for example, there's The Sims, you'll be able to play Madden 11, Asphalt 6. There are definitely some decent games that come with it. And you can also pick up quite a few. So, if I scroll over here, you guys will find you can pick up Minecraft. Minecraft is a great game on this. I've done a previous video on some of the gaming. So, if you guys are interested in that, you can check it out. But overall, the gaming, it's the library is not too bad. Of course, a lot of these Android games are available for many other platforms just optimized for the physical controls. Um, however, one problem I had was that the amount of games just isn't that great. I mean, there are definitely some games, and, you know, they're not bad, but um, a lot of the games on Android Market are still, you know, touch-based, and while they work fine, it kind of seems like a little bit of a waste, but, uh, well, not a huge deal. Another important app is the PlayStation Pocket One. Now, what this is all about is giving you PlayStation 1 games. You can almost think of it as the PlayStation 1 emulator. Uh, now, by default, it does come with Crash Bandicoot. However, you can download a couple of other games. When I say a couple, I mean a couple. This is all you get. There's, what, five games in here? Uh, now, these games are pretty reasonably priced, so you mean it's not like you have to pay a ton of money to play them, but um, overall, there's definitely just not that much content. That's a little bit of a problem for me. You know, if you get a uh, you know, phone that's all about gaming, you really expect to have lots and lots of games available. However, that's not really the case. Even though, you know, $6 for a PS1 game is not that bad, uh, it's just not really what I was expecting. Now, powering this is a 1 GHz Snapdragon processor. Uh, now, it is only single core, which is a little bit out of place in this world of dual core processors. However, it's not all that bad in general UI things. So, if you want to scroll out here, we can swipe and scroll and do whatever we want. And there really is no lag in the UI. Uh, so, some of the features that you do have are, of course, you have some pre-built apps. So, for example, the Kindle app. And to be honest, on this 4-inch display, I can actually probably do some reading. It's not all that bad. Uh, some of the other apps, of course, you do have your camera, your contacts, all that kind of, you know, standard boring kind of stuff. Uh, there's nothing really that jumps out. Of course, you have Gmail and, you know, pretty much the entire normal suite of applications that you do find on 
uh, Android phones. And of course, you do have access to the Android market. So if you're interested in more applications, which I'm sure you will be, you can certainly go ahead and download all you like from here. One great feature is the soft keyboard. Now, while it's a little bit weird for me, at least, to have a you know phone that has slide out something that's not a keyboard. I found myself trying to open the keyboard up a couple of times. Uh, but on the side of it, uh, the software keyboard is great. So uh, you can do a lot of typing and whatnot. So let's just go to, oops, let's back all this out here. And let's go ahead and open up a website for you guys and give you a little demo of how it works. Uh, it is only a single core processor, like I said, so it's not going to be blazing fast or anything, but it's certainly not half bad. Uh, now, there is one problem I did notice, and you guys will see it right down there. Uh, this is annoying to me. I don't know. It's just like, I know it's nice to be able to zoom and stuff, but this has multi-touch. I can do that you know, without the zoom slider, so I think it's a little bit silly to have. Uh, not a huge deal or anything, but it is a little bit of an annoyance. Now, another really nice feature is the camera app. Uh, now, the camera app is pretty standard, so you can see me, hello. Um, but, of course, there's some new options, or not rather new, but there's some pretty decent options. So, if we switch over to the back-facing camera, you guys will be able to see, I can, you know, rotate and everything, no problem. But there are quite a few options. So, for example, you can put it in macro mode, do the exposure, scene modes, the picture size, there's quite a bit that you can do with it. You can also turn on location, white balance, and all that kind of good stuff, as well as flash. Uh, now, overall, the pictures are decent. Now, they're not going to be anything spectacular, uh, but it does have a decent macro mode, like I said, and it's not half bad. Uh, the front-facing camera is a front-facing camera. It's nothing going to be that particularly amazing. As far as the video goes, it does only shoot 480p, uh, and it, it's okay. I mean, it's nothing spectacular, but it's nothing you know going to be horrible. I mean, if you need a quick shot, you can quick uh, certainly do that. As far as call quality goes, it's not half bad. Of course, this is an AT&T phone, and that's really going to depend on how servers is in your area. Uh, but my testing, I found that it really picks up signal just as well as any other AT&T phone that I've ever reviewed. No real problems there. And of course, it does have the HSPA Plus network, aka AT&T 4G. Um, and data speeds are not half bad. Now, I do live in a pretty poor area of AT&T service, so I was really never able to get that good of speeds. But of course, it's all going to depend on how the speeds are in your area. So, you know, if you if you have good AT&T service, you can expect somewhere in the neighborhood for my testing of around one to two kilobits, or rather megabits per second down kilobits. That would be bad. Anyway, guys, it's going to be about it for my review of the Xperia Play 4G. Overall, I'm a little torn on this one. On the one hand, for $50 it's a, on contract, it's a really solid phone. I mean, of course, you do have all the PlayStation functionality, and there should be some more content coming soon. We haven't really seen it yet, but uh, there should be a lot of cool stuff on the way soon. Um, on the other hand, though, there are some problems that I have with, full, uh, with wholeheartedly recommending it. First of which, it's pretty fat. Um, it's kind of hard to get a good idea, but I mean, it's it's a kind of a fat phone. And while I can understand, I mean, the, you know, the sliding mechanism is really, really nice. You don't have to really worry about it too much at all. But um, it does add some pretty nice bulk to it. And uh, I don't know, it's, it's, it's not too bad by most standards, but considering it's 2011, there are a lot of much thinner phones on the market. Um, speaking of it being 2011, a single core processor is, I mean, it's not laggy or slow, uh, but consider this, the PlayStation Vita will be coming out in the next few months. It's going to have a quad core processor. Uh, this has only got single core, so it's kind of already a little bit outdated as far as the games go. Um, which is a bit of a worry for me. I don't think it's a deal breaker, but it is something to keep in mind. Uh, so overall, if you do really do a lot of gaming and you really like having something like the touchpad, uh, it is a nice feature. It definitely is. But if you're just looking for a normal phone, if you're really, you're not into gaming, I don't really recommend this. This is really for someone who's into gaming and wants to get a fairly cheap phone on AT&T. Anyway, guys, that's going to be about it for my review. If you enjoyed, definitely be sure to leave it a thumbs up. And if you're interested in more videos like this, be sure to subscribe.